morning, everyone. Spring has sprung, and it's the two-year anniversary of this YouTube channel. So, I thought we would celebrate by making an encased floral cane using Creation is Messy Goji. Let's do it. Our colors for today are all sim colors. I'm going to make the base bead out of prairie grass. And then I pulled a flat uh, leaf cane out of juniper with some ochre stripes. I also have an uh, encased cane of Freeman that I encased it with Sacre Bleu. And then I have this new goji, which is a really pretty kind of bright reddish orange opaque and I made my goji in two configurations we have a regular stringer and I made an encased cane with a fet tray clear because I'm going to use them both and a fet tray super clear oh and I also made some black and white cane for the tops so yeah I think that's it let's go okay here we go this one's going to be a long one, you guys, so grab your coffee cuppy or your cup of coffee and um, have a seat because, <laughs> you know, it's an encased floral and they take a while. All right, the first thing I'm going to do, I pulled a little teeny tiny uh, vine cane from my leaf cane. And so on your encased florals, I always want to put the vines down first and melt them in because you want to work from back to front. So anything that goes in the background, like vines, I always lay down first. And to be honest, I think vines are the only thing that goes in the real background. <laughs> Seems like the flowers and the leaves, um, they're all at the same level. Okay, I'm just melting that vine cane in. I have a little Marva here just to kind of help things along. And let's start making our flowers. Now this is my goji encased cane and I thought I would make a bunch of encased flowers. And let's just put those, I don't know, around the center. Just make a little spiral. Use the side of your flame to heat up that encased cane. And that spiral is going to stay all nice and separated because we encased it. And I make some big spirals and some little spirals, just putting the spirals down wherever you think it's appropriate. I'm going to do a big one right here. You can do your spirals coming off of the vines. Oh, that looks cool. Let's do a little one right here. You know, spiral roses look really neat and they're very easy to do. All right, now I'm going to go through those spirals and just kind of press them down just a bit. Get stuff all nice and attached. Okay. Same here, nice and attached. Same there, nice and attached. Okay, that looks good. Now the regular stringer, I'm just going to make some dot flowers. And man, I'm going to turn down this torch. This sucker's hot. Alright, so in between the spirals, let's just do little easy flowers. Maybe three petals. And go in with your X-Acto knife and just kind of petal them out by putting a little slice right down the center. Down the center. Down the center. And you can take your leftover ochre stringer here and just put a dot in the center. 
and you want to go ahead and flatten that dot down too. It's the little dots that always pop off. It's never the big dots. So right here it looks like I can put a four petal flower. So just four petals, north, south, east, west. Get that exacto knife. Oh, they're so little. No coffee before this, because then you'll shake. <laughs> I only had one, one cup. Oh, and the minute I say shake, I start to shake. What a doofus. Put that one down there, like so. All right, let's do another, let's do another three petal. Oh, actually, let's do a four petal right here. One, two, three, four. Okay, cool. And now the petally cuts. Petal cuts, petal cuts. Okay, and then I need a little yellow stamen in the center, like so. Pat her down. All right, let's go ahead and put in our leaves. So I got my leaf cane, and basically the leaves, they come off the vines wherever you think you need a little leaf. And you want to kind of keep them small because of the fact that when these are encased and they melt down, they're going to get a little fatter. And then as soon as I say that, I make a big old fatty leaf. So just a little brush stroke, just grab that leaf and pull it out. If you have a vine, great. If you don't have a vine available, the leaves come off the flowers. <laughs> I just kind of fill in little spots here and there where I think it needs a leaf. Okay, that's good. Let's go in now with those leaves and on the tippy tips, I just press them down again. Press them down, press them down. There we go. Okay, now the final thing, I like to put baby's breath in my, um, in my florals. So a white, like little, just a white cane, or in this case, I'm gonna do blue baby's breath. And just cause I so love the look of the encased cane. Little teeny, teeny, oops. Little teeny tiny ones, except for when a big old blobber comes off the end of your cane. But you can usually pick it off. And then go ahead and with those little dots, press them down. Okay, and I just go in between the flowers, wherever I think maybe a little blue dot would be warranted. <laughs> this is all part of just design and what looks good to your eye. And sometimes they're going to be two of them together, sometimes three. Just press them down, make sure they don't go pew. They won't go pew once I get that clear on, that's for sure. Maybe here we need some. These beads are so cathartic because you just kind of go in there and do your little meditation thing and Ah, oh, spring is in the air. The birds are singing. The sun is out. At least here in Las Vegas, it's out. I don't know about you guys. I know it's still stormy in some places of the country. Okay, there we go. I am happy now to encase. And of course, when we're encasing, my biggest nemesis are bubbles. And in order to kind of reduce that, the first thing that really helps a lot is kind of melting that, that design down a bit. 
So just kind of torch it up and this is where like the pressing in helps a lot. Any place where you are going to have like a ridge, that is where bubbles are going to show up. So some people will melt in their designs all the way. I don't. I'm lazy. What can I say? But I do recognize that I have some raised areas. And so we're going to pay attention to those. All right, once you get the design flattened to your liking, the second thing is you want to let your bead kind of cool a bit so that you don't smudge the design when you put down your encasing. So I usually, um, I let it, I keep wanting to say I let it dry. No, it's not paint, it's glass. I let it cool to the point that it's not glowing. And then I'm going to go in and let's review encasing again. I'm going to get a really super, super hot molten blob on the end of my clear. And then I'm going to take that blob and I'm going to push it down and drag the rod through it. And then at the end of the blob, I pull my rod backwards. So I have this kind of sharp ridge right here where I can do the next blob. If you have like this long skinny tail, um, that's just another area that you can get bubbles. So I started pulling my rods backwards when I reach the end of my molten blob. And this is the part that takes a long time, but just be patient. And if you push in that molten hot liquidy clear, the chances of you getting bubbles in all those little ridges, it really goes down. Okay, push it down, drag it through, and then pull it backwards. And you can see there that I don't do it all the time, but I should. And it's just, you know, I need practice too, you guys. I am not perfect. Those that can't do, teach. <laughs> That's me. All right. I'm getting another molten blob. And I'm going to push it down and just drag it through and then pull backwards. And so far, so good. I haven't smudged my design. My bead is nice and warm. And I don't see any bubbles yet. Yay. All right. Here's another one. Mush it down, drag the rod through it, and then pull the rod backwards. And I'm trying to find where my previous encasement stopped because I want the sides to bump up against each other. It's always good if the sides bump up instead of having to go back in later and fill in holes. Drag it through, pull it up. And don't worry about how it looks right now. It's gonna look like a blobby mess. But that's why shaping happens later. Let's just get the glass down and concentrate on not having any bubbles and not smearing your design. So far, so good. Now once you get the encasement down, you can go to the left side and really um, use the left side to heat that bead. Help keep that bead nice and warm. Drag it through, pull it backwards. I think I got one or two blobs left here and we should be in good shape. All right, one more right about here it backwards I don't oh my gosh this may be the best encasing I have ever done in my whole life let's make sure we get the edges that's one area I always miss are the little edges at the end of the bead so I make a little loop-de-loop -loop there okay this looks good I'm happy now we can start giving it some shape and some form. So when we move on to the next step here of shaping it, 
We want to shape the outer clear layer, but we don't want to affect the, um, the inside. Don't smear your design. So you might see an area where you think, I need a little more clear. Like I can see one right here in the center. So if you see little divots or areas where you think, ah, I could use just a tad more glass. Right about there. Now, if you're going to use a roller like this, be gentle. And for me, I do a lot more pressing than I do rolling. Because if I press straight up and down, you're less likely to smear your design. So I'm going to just kind of start. See how gentle I'm being? And it's a straight up and down press. I don't know if this bead is going to fit in this press. It's a honker. You know what? I don't want to take the chance. I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to just hand marver it on the back side. So, gentle, 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 gentle. Combination of pressing and rolling, making sure that I only touch that outer clear. I really want to protect my design. Okay, and then it's just back and forth and back and forth and back and forth till you get an oval that you like. And if you don't like ovals, this makes a great barrel bead. And I go from one side to the other, back and forth. All right, we're doing the right side now. I think this is going to come out pretty dang good. Okay, my final step is to put on this border cane. And the first thing I want to do is just square up the sides. Square up the edges like so. Break your bead release. Lovely. Wonderful. All right, let's get this border cane on. I'm going to turn down my torch. Now, when I put on this cane, I'm going to have it sit next to the edge here. So it's not going to really go on top here. It's going to go next to the edge. Almost like you could, um, you could angle your, your bead. And very slowly, I'm going to rotate this cane while I'm laying it down. I'm rotating to the right because I want those little coils to be nice and tight. There we go. Okay, so now what you do <laughs> when you get your coils on, let's kind of get rid of this little smudge here. Go ahead and melt it. And what will happen is those coils will spread and they'll start to make those wonderful puckered holes that I just think really finish the bead. I probably could have angled, like tapered my oval a little bit more, but I am just melting that stripe on the top and it's starting to flow towards my mandrel, just like that. Hope you can see it. And that is going to close up any kind of ridge that we have on that side. And it's going to look like a beautiful puckered hole, which I really like. Okay, let me do this other side. Same thing. And it helps if you have maybe a thicker stringer. You guys can play around with the stringer thickness. I'm laying it down on the top and I'm rotating my stringer as I lay it down in a really shaky, ugly way. Ah! Uh, okay, we're gonna cheat. Where's my tool? Where's my tool? 
here it is. So <laughs> I got a little edge here that kind of didn't go on roundly. So I'm cheating. I'm just kind of pushing it out a bit. <laughs> and then this part here, let's kind of just flatten it a bit. Try to make it look like I planned it that way. All right, get some heat on here and keep the rest of the bead warm too, you guys. And you can crank up your torch a little bit at this point. We're trying to get things to melt. I might not melt this all the way down to the mandrel because I knocked my bead release off. Dang it. <laughs> and the last thing I want is to make this beautiful bead and then have it get stuck on the mandrel. Oh, that's that sucks. Okay, good enough for me. There we go. Now, if you want, you can give it one final shape on a clean marver. go on this side. I think this side is okay. And my border is completely melted in. There's no ridges or lines or anything. It's all the way, it's all the way flat. And there you go, you guys. Let me get this in the kiln and get it um, annealed and cooled off and I'll show you the final bead. Here it is, you guys, our final bead. And I got a few bubbles, but not many. I think this looks really pretty. I kind of wish I'd have put more flowers on it. <laughs> but this is a good start. Um, it's a crystal clear bead with lots of goji flowers and little blue baby's breath. Have a great day, everyone. And I will be back soon for our next video.